Welcome back to another pro player coaching. Uh, today we have Bowden Temnik with us playing Pendulum. Well, he's not playing. He'll be guiding me through Pendulums. Yeah. This is Jason's replay. Shout outs to yeah. him. Um, yeah. Shout out to Poppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Poppers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so like Bowden is pretty well known for the yeah, community. For, my, uh, uh, I, have, I have a win with uh, the original Pepe deck at an ARG. I was like the first person to win with like the plush fire perform age, like brilliant fusion deck. And then I have a second place with metal foes at YCS Sydney. So I'm sort of well versed in pendulum. I haven't really played this deck enough to like know what I'm doing, but <laughs> I, I, I understand what you should be ending with. Like every time I play against it, I always see my opponents end with like a worse field than they should be ending with. So hopefully this will be some good insight into how you should play this deck. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, first up, just a quick rundown of the deck list. Um, it seems pretty standard. Anything you would want to change? Or... Yeah, I, I still really like Gamma in this deck. Um, I just think it's really powerful. Uh, and, like, you can you can utilize lists with, like, multiple Pendulum Calls and Gamma, and then, like, you have more cards that can get hit by Ash, then you can just Gamma them, right, for free. And then you get to make an Omega, then you get to make more Omegas, and then you get to make, like, a Tornado Dragon and such a trap, and it's just kind of cool. Other than that, it looks really standard. You have, like, the one Pendulum Sorcerer. You have uh, one White Wing, make the double Omega play, uh... And like all the other cool cheesy stuff, I guess. <laughs> Only two wavering eyes, but I guess like the deck is just streamlined to the point now where you don't even need wavering eyes to enable all your combos. You usually just make a rank four and like pop a double iris. But okay, yeah, it looks pretty standard for the main deck. The side deck, uh, it's probably not too much to like <laughs> phone home about. It's got the nice spicy pendulum storm that you can search and uh, all the other cool stuff. Like random mind crush to go with the solemn scoldings, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what that was but, about, uh, yeah. but. Yeah, yeah no. one of Chaos Hunter. Extra deck, extra deck also looks standard as well. I know um, I know there's some cool stuff with Akashic Magician that I haven't really like seen too much. I just know like you can do some really cool things with um, like Witch of the Black Forest. I think Jason also told me that, but that's not in this list, so that's pretty good because I'm probably going to blank on it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. All right, so if anyone knows some Witch of the Black Forest combos with Akashic, just uh, let us know down below, please. <laughs> uh, some, someone, from, uh, someone from your area will probably post. I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> My area. Oh, yeah. All right, let's uh, start off with the replays. So he's playing against uh, Trickstar here. Um, mm -hmm. I believe he loses the dice roll as well and ends up going second. It's like kind of less than desirable matchup, I think. I think you're... Well, like, Spiros is obviously the best deck, right? But... Trickstar just does stuff against like other rogue decks that like most rogue decks can't do, which is kind of disappointing. But. Mm. Uh, opponent just goes first turn terraforming. Any reason you would or yeah. wouldn't just ash it? Um, like maybe no information. You can like justify not ashing it. I still think I can justify not ashing it, but it, like if it's Trickstar, then you just ash the reincarnation, right? And if it's uh, Spiral, then you just ash the Helix. Um, I don't see any other deck where I just wouldn't want to hold the Ash. I guess maybe like um, even even like Draco, right? You just hold it for Heritage. Like this, is, yeah. I think you just hold it for like a higher value card. Like the field spells probably just going to resolve anyway half the time. So mm -hmm. okay, yeah. And if so they, uh, they, something if a lot they of burn you out and kill you, bad luck. <laughs> like, <laughs> it sucks. Uh. So a lot of things uh, people kind of do is. Um, with Ash is just sort of be a bit too trigger happy with it and mm. I guess it's interesting it's a, it's a really powerful card I think you just have to like use it at the right point and I think mm. against this deck it's usually just against reincarnation unless it's like unless you're really low on life in which case you just sometimes have to Ash like a Candina or a Light Stage and it's like the correct play but it just depends like this early I think you just hold it I think it's interesting as well that you've identified that there is certain cards in each mm. matchup that you need to hold it for specifically rather mm. than just being like, okay, well, yeah, Resort is really powerful yeah. in Spiral, but that doesn't mean you should... <laughs> Pretty much. Ash it. What, did he, um, what did he set, by the way? Did he set a, another spell? It was a Pendulum Graph. Oh, okay. The Trap. Okay. The Trap? Oh, okay. So you're just playing around Reincarnation. That makes sense. <laughs> oh, he had... Uh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, he added and then he Reincarnation rolled. Okay, cool. That's pretty good. He doesn't need to search anymore this turn, which is nice. Yeah. He's just gonna like pendulum summon and hopefully make a tornado dragon. So. I'm curious why he didn't activate pendulum graph though. Uh, because he wouldn't be able to add anyway. He got draw unlocked. 
Oh yeah, that's true. But uh, I, I mean, is there any reason maybe just not some, to have it on the field? I I, I mean, I, I assume you're gonna play it anyway. I, I like maybe there's like some niche scenario where you want your spell cast that's unaffected by spells, but. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Those cuts also have those that really cool, uh, like the unaffected by whatever. I think it's unaffected by whatever, right? It's like uh, the trap makes them unaffected by traps, and then the thing makes them unaffected by spells, or like they can't be targeted by those cards. The pendulums? Um, the pendulum graphs, like the spells and traps. Like, oh. uh, if you, yeah. Can, oh, your opponent cannot target spell cards monsters with spell cards or effects. Yeah. Opponent can't target them with traps. So I, guess, I guess it's like semi relevant, right? Yeah, I suppose. Okay, so uh, okay, you think like tornadoes are the best play versus yeah, uh, tornadoes? Just tornadoes, just really, really powerful. <laughs> like, uh, I, I can just always see it being good. Um, there's like, there's like some, uh, like always in the back of your head, you should be like thinking, well, what if my opponent has honest or something? Um, but then at the same time, you could also just be like, hey, what if my opponent has solemn strike? So what if my opponent has like some trap that interacts with tornado dragon's effect? So you got to take like a nice fifty-fifty here and like figure out what opponent you're versing. If you're versing someone and you just think. This is the kind of guy that's playing honest in these tricks, our deck. You know what? I'm going to pop his set card just in case I swing into an honest now. Those are like little <laughs> weird things you should be thinking about, but like obviously sometimes it just never becomes like an issue. But if everyone's playing towards like the hive mind, then you just get to like avoid scenarios like that. But always in the back of your head, you should be thinking, okay, well, if he's not playing strike, maybe he's playing honest and vice versa and just like play according to that. So. I suppose scapegoat is maybe potentially the most annoying thing to play around because you know. Oh well, yeah, pop- Scape- scapegoat is way too good. That card's um, that card's really powerful in this deck. Well, like this is like one of the few decks where you get to play a bunch of traps that sort of like, uh, just stop your opponent. Maybe not directly, like indirectly stop your opponent, and then you get to like scapegoat. It's like really big tempo play. Like you just get so much damage on board, or you just like summon a bore load, and that's kind of cool. Like I think that's like the coolest part. Yeah. It's also just um, annoying to like use your tornado dragon and then like yeah. you're trying to hit like a strike or something and you end up hitting scapegoat yeah. and you can't really do anything well, except like, be another overrun. reincarnation, right? Even another reincarnation is just like a big issue for you. Mm, yeah, I haven't seen anything like bad that's been done either, which is really cool because generally I see like people play these like hands out and they just don't go for tornado. And it's just it's just a whole thing. Oh, and Ingrisu, okay. So has he? He hasn't used a trap this time yet, has he? No. Not yet. No. Okay. So he's probably. So I assume dope. he's just gonna like, yeah, because like, well, Ningris is just gonna like kill something. So like, he's just gonna trap and then pop and do that shit, right? Yeah. Is there any point where uh, maybe he should have time pendulum graph before he made Ningirsu? Like so probably. I, I don't think so. I don't think it's like really worthwhile. I'm sort of like, I'm trying to figure out if it's like worthwhile keeping the poison i'm just trying to figure out if there's like anything that the other guy can do where if like you don't play the token but i don't know if it's like super relevant like off the top of my head i feel like there's like maybe like a rank three play that he can do with like a link spider but it probably doesn't seem very good there might be some like other cool like link plays he can do with the extra card but i just feel like there might be like some argument to keeping the purple poison because it's generally like one of the higher value ones yeah so i just i guess it just depends if he had, he like, has uh, Kandina, right? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, uh, like, well, you know, he has Kandina, and you know, he has like li- like plays into Lily Pell. So it's like, if you, if he finds a way to out like your trap, I sort of would rather have the purple poison because then like I can search like uh, something that isn't Wisdom Eye or something, right? And then I like no, maybe not with like you can just search a card that will like let you proc your purple poison and then kill their card. You know what I mean? So like maybe just keeping the purple poison instead of killing it with the trap. Yeah, but like searching yeah. out, I don't know, like harmonizing in that scenario. Uh, yeah, that that's also probably argue. Like you can probably argue for that as well. The thing is, if these two cards stick, then he's doing that anyway. So like, I, I guess you take the one that's like, so like the harmonizing is only good if like your play ends up resolving next turn. Whereas the wisdom is just generally better in more scenarios here. Or if like, let's say, well, if he drew a strike, he's setting, like he's, he's going to set it off the top, right? He didn't have a turn one. He's just going to set it. Mm-hmm. So like a solemn strike won't matter. Um, I, I don't know. Like you, 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 you don't know what one card in his hand does essentially. Right. So there's like the card that he drew and he said, all right, sweet. So <laughs> he was only playing around the card that he drew. I guess he took the play that like sort of mitigates if he does draw like something like strike or like some weird trap that just stops him from playing. 
Because at least in um, Wisdom, I just turns into another purple poison. So that's pretty cool. It's interesting that he topped the Ulf Dragon here for for turn M. Is there... Would you would you go for Wisdom Eye? Just the triggered Pendulum Graph? Or would you just go for Ulf? Uh, well, if you just put his like backer on being a blank, you can probably just kill him this turn, I think. <laughs> So you just go like, well, obviously you're taking like way more damage than you should be taking. He's like kind of low already. Mm -hmm. um, but I think this is like the kill turn where he's just going to like Wisdom Eye. Um, he's going to get like whatever low scale he needs. And then he's going to like trigger the Pendulum Graph and just like just kill him. I think that's probably the best way that he should be going about it. So maybe it go for okay. Poison and then po Poison get popped by the Graph and then that means he clears the back uh, row and the monster and then just Pendulum summons and tries to go for game? Oh, he's got uh, Scapegoat. I, I guess? Like, <laughs> Gertz, Gertz is like really awkward here, but like just the fact that he has two cards in hand and you know that those two cards aren't doing anything and you get to make a rank 4 or you get to make like a, a Synchro, right? Mm -hmm. That just that just puts you so far ahead. I was sort of just like semi go for Broke. Yeah, all right, so he's triggering star. He can't trigger Fang. Um, he can. Uh, well, he's got a he's got a big pendulum play, and he gets to add back. So he's going to have. Mm. Can he make? Yeah, a just, I think just the fact that he gets to add back is also really huge. He's actually just playing this really, really well. I, I haven't. This is like there's like no missteps here. I can definitely get behind this. Just is a scapegoat. It's like I don't. He he definitely had a kill turn in the form of the um I think it's the the fusion that lets you it's the fusion or the sinker I think it's the sinker I don't know if he played that in the list though it's the uh, supreme king starving venom uh, it's the one that makes everything like zero and you just get to like end their career I think <laughs> uh, so it this does piercing the, and it's the sinker yeah. Might be the synchro, yeah. Nine, nine sure it's the synchro. <laughs> that would just be like kill shot against most stuff, right? Yeah. Just got a synchro summon. Destroy all monsters your opponent control. Do that. Yeah. Well, that would just be like wiping the board, right? Well, it wouldn't. Uh, wait, no, it would kill. Would kill the guy attached to Holy Angel as well. Okay, cool. No, it should be fine. Maybe like maybe he didn't have kill shot through all the reincarnations either, and like he's probably just gonna go for like a play that sort of just like secures in the game. Oh, yeah, it's Maxi. Okay, cool. <laughs> How irrelevant. Um, yeah, this is, like, semi-awkward. I think maybe you just, like, Pendulum Summon 2 and then go for, like... Uh, oh, God, I have no idea. You have to, like, <laughs> try and... You have, you, have, we have to, you have to clear his board, right? So maybe you just do have to go for the... You do have to go for the Synchro. And you just have to give him two draws. And then you just wipe the entire board clean. And then he just has, like, a Reincarnation Engrave and, like, a Candina in hand, I guess. It doesn't sound that bad. Oh, no, wait, he doesn't have the Candidator in hand, right? He made Holy Angel. And he also doesn't have the Reincarnation. Oh, yeah, no, you just make the Synchro. That you make easy. the Synchro, and then really, like, the only thing you're risking him top decking at that point to... Well, like, there's nothing, right? <laughs> he, I think he needs to be playing, like, two Lily Bell for it to be relevant. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Although, otherwise, like, Candine is not really an out either. Yeah, he's just going for it. Yeah, Pendulum Summon 2, make Synchro, kill everything. Uh, he's not using Harmonize. Yeah, there we go. He's doing it. The boy's doing it. We're good. Hey, there we go. Absolutely cold it. That was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> done, Jason. Ability. I'll kill everything and, and I'll attack directly and hope for the best. And see, like, like going into next turn, it's like uh, the other guy just... Like, this deck is like... So Trickstar, like when it doesn't have a reincarnation in Grave, or it doesn't have like a scapegoat set, right? It's just ridiculously sort of like so like Trickstar can tend to do like a lot, but like without those cards, it doesn't do a lot, right? Those are the uh the what is it, the additional extenders, as Johnny Lee or Patrick Hopin would like to say. So now <laughs> it's just like he's gonna his best play is gonna be summon Candina and then maybe search a second Lily Bell and then maybe make something that doesn't suck. But generally, it's gonna be something that does suck. <laughs> there's also like there's also like rank uh, there's like rank three lines of play as well. That's like the other stuff that this deck can do, where it's just like summon Candina, slam down two Lycoris, and then make a rank three. But like at this point, I think it's just kind of <laughs> he's kind of clutching at straws. He's uh he's fallen too far behind. He'll need like a cosmic cycling to add the trap. He'll need like just way too many cards to do anything. All rank three are you even making in this scenario? 
I guess like <laughs> well maybe not this scenario specifically he, but just in general like what he can, he can make like break sword I guess or he can even just try and like go for like a, a semi weird game shot but that requires like again it just requires way too many cards that he had to have drawn from like uh, three unique draws which is like the two for maxi and then the one for turn so it's just gonna be like the field spell such a candina and then now like Oh, yeah, Gofu's also, like, another good card in this deck. But it's a card that you don't tend to see, like, too often, because obviously Gofu's the one. So right now, this could get, like, kind of spicy. He could do some, like, uh... He can do some, like, level 8 synchro stuff. Um, if he plays, like, another Lily Bell, obviously, he can do, like, some Ancient Fairy Dragon stuff that probably just sucks. Um, but I think the trap's probably just gonna stop him at this point. And, like, it, it generally won't even matter what the trap is targeting, either. Or what he searches. Like, this game is just pretty much locked up in his favor he's letting this uh stay up. well actually he's thinking just now i mean well, what's the worst what's the worst case scenario he makes another ningrisu right yeah i figure you that you can you can probably just milk the the trap for value in this situation like the gofu is only one card and it's generated two cards right like you're, you're definitely not gonna sort of like try and balance out like what the, the card has produced so you may as well just let him go the whole nine yards, but mm. I, I don't know. I, I feel like he's scared of something, I guess, but uh, we'll see. I, I guess the proxy dragon also can protect, uh, it, protect can, it can protect Candina, right? Yeah. Yeah. The card you control, we destroy a battle of thing. Okay, that works. Uh, but the trap would just ignore that, so uh, weird. Um, yeah, we'll see. You're we'll see where um, card Vader goes. So you're searching a second trap in a wisdom eye. Yeah, yeah, Wisdom Eye is generally the one you just like want to take out of your deck. Because Wisdom Eye is all the guys in your deck. So it's like oh, ideally the best one. <laughs> okay, so did he just, he just normal summon the second Lily Bill. Okay, this might get like kind of... Actually, this is like really good for him to have killed Proxy Dragon, I think. But again, like the trap doesn't care about Proxy Dragon. So <laughs> uh, I, I don't know where the argument is. But... He's, He's only got one of them. Thing. Oh, uh, I guess he has like he has game if he has a reincarnation, right? Uh, oh no, he normal summon the Lily Bell. Oh, I see, I see. That works. So he normal summon the Lily Bell. He added back the Liker, and then he triggered the effect after he bounced it back, and then specialed it again. And now he's just swinging for sixteen. I right? swear, I thought yeah. he had the reincarnation in his grave. Is he sixteen or a thousand? Yeah, sixteen. Yeah. Um. No, he used the reincarnation the turn before. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, when he did the whole big-ass play. <laughs> what was, the, like, the recovery play? Because he's more broken, but, um... Yeah. This is just gonna be, like, kind of weird. I don't know if this is just, like, he's doing this so he doesn't die. But, <laughs> like, Jason just should be able to kill him this turn. Like, even through most hand traps, I'm pretty sure. Let's see what yeah, he's just clicking through it. We good, we good. <laughs> Wait, Star is it is mandatory. Whoops. <laughs> uh, that's why I, I also usually just say it doesn't matter what you search. When people ask me like, "What what do you search?" It's just like, "Well, you're getting a free card, right?" I don't like obviously you take the best one, but if you don't know, then you can just take anyone. <laughs> like it's free. Who really cares? Um, <laughs> he's, just, he's just gonna yeah, he's just gonna try and kill. Him. Like I should do it though, right? Two sex, someone is at the door. All right, yeah, good, good, good chat. Good chat, <laughs> chat Chase. <laughs> ash oh, yeah, an ash. I think the ash on the harmonizing just doesn't even matter here either. It has to just be a game show, right? Between like double iris plus like that's 14, 12, 26, 25. Yeah, that's 51. And he doesn't have a reincarnation in grave. That's just game through Link Spider, right? Dark spellcaster, so he can target it with double iris. That's 34. Yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, 14 thing and the rest. Oh, and he can also use the Supreme Guy, right? Yeah. There we go. Eh, didn't matter. <laughs> he had game without the, the Synchro. But... All right, going into siding for uh, Trick Stars, what would be your kind of some go to cards here? Uh, You're probably going to be going second, um, right? Yeah. Uh, like the one Chaos Hunter. Probably the Cosmic <laughs> Cyclones, I guess. Uh, Pendulum Storm, maybe. It's just like it's like kind of weak against like Anti Spell. Like, I don't know if Trick Stars be siding Anti Spell. I haven't really seen, like, I haven't seen it too much. Like, Anti-Spell's sort of just fallen out of favor because it's just a card that is, like, obviously strictly worse than many of the other cards you could use against Spirals. You sort of just want to, like, hedge your bets in these matchups. 
Um, maybe evenly matched. I don't really like evenly matched against Trickstar too much, but they also do just like pump out big boards. So I would have liked to have seen some, maybe some board clears in the side deck because Pendulum, like, Pendulum can have a tough time dealing with Baguska, but like not as much as like Spiral. So I still, I like cards like Dark Hole and Rake. There's like a lot of threatening monsters that you sort of just want to clear for free and evenly match obviously doesn't clear them all the time, so... What do you think of Maxi? That's probably what I, feel I like. like that's maybe not really great against Trickstar. Um, it's pretty good. Like this isn't a deck that you should be getting burned to death with, unless they open like the nuts. So he's probably just gonna like peel a drawer against the Lycoris, and if he has two Lycoris, then good. And by two Lycoris, I mean <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Yeah, like, take, taking the extra damage doesn't really do anything. But he's just gonna like summon Lycoris. Um, Jason's gonna chain Maxi's and just take the draw. Oh, <laughs> he got a bit trigger happy. Whoops. Yeah, he does. And by trigger happy, I mean time. it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. He's J Jason should only be getting one draw here anyway if they're playing a real game of Yu-Gi-Oh. But we'll see. Because <laughs> like ideally, like you you will use Lycoris or Maxi, and then you'll chain the second Lycoris, and then they'll get one less draw and. Yeah. They'll still burn for playing both the damage, but his hands are looking really good right now. Um, oh yeah, but he is gonna have to be playing around the reincarnation. Mm. Well, the reincarnation, like, he has the cosmic cycling to play around the reincarnation. Um, some other cool stuff I've seen like Trickstar players do as well is they would, um, if they think their opponent is really good, they would side. Oh wow! Like, Ash return. Stuff. Oh yeah, game's over. There's the Ash boss. <laughs> Is this going to be one of those matches where I watch just Trickstar lose to her? God, I hope so. <laughs> so what were you saying? Trickstar players doing? Um, they, they'll like put twin twisters and stuff in. So like the the better players will be setting. You should generally be setting your stuff before like <laughs> before playing something to play around like reincarnation droll, obviously. But also just like setting like high generally high value cards. Like maybe you can sort of like hedge your bets sometimes and think if your opponent's gonna next level you or not. But if you know they have reincarnation, you just like set a high value card, um, <laughs> set another one, and then your opponent just like next levels you and like twin twists you, and like you lose two high value cards and they still have a reincarnation. That shit's kind of dumb. I think that's definitely like stuff that people just sort of overlook. And like a lot of the trick style players have sort of been like putting into their arsenal now. And it's a lot harder with the pendulum deck because it's like less chainable cards. They're all really powerful. So I think it's interesting um, that he didn't use the reincarnation when he set this or like activated one of the scales. Would that maybe have been a better did he, scenario? Did he just cosmic raw? I think he just cosmic the reincarnation raw, right? Yeah. That sounds better. Mm, I don't like that. I definitely don't like that. I think you're just not meant to ever do it against this matchup, but I guess he's sort of like committed enough cards to the board. Um, but like, like yeah, ideally, whatever. you want to be holding cosmic for just in the end phase of their sets. Or? Well, like, what's it? What's it gonna be? Like, generally, it's just like I guess scapegoat doesn't do anything here, which is kind of cool, right? You need to sort of like check for what card it is. I think is probably the best argument, and you can usually check for what card it is. You can like copper search, that's like kind of not high value, but like good enough value. And then you get to like, uh, I I don't know, like I I just think like playing it in that sort of scenario is just like really weak because like he's already low enough. He's just gonna eat a bunch of damage, and the guys like rolled him. Um, like the best case scenario is he's just gonna make like a tornado dragon, or he's gonna make like some generic rank four, right? Mm -hmm. Can't make the can make the good ones. Um, I don't know. What did he draw here? He drolled after his reincarnation result. Oh yeah, it was the reincarnation. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Like, just it's just the fact that Jason just had the trap anyway. <laughs> he actually peeled the trap off the draw, which is kind of wild. So. Um, I don't know if I like Poppers here, but I guess the guy has uh, <laughs> the guy has reincarnation in graves, so there's like an argument for it. Uh, but there's like also no other <laughs> there's no other XCs that are good, so. Oh yeah, another card that's like really awkward is like the light stage as well. Like when you're trying to play around reincarnation, sometimes you have to commit cards to the field and like they just roll and lock you anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can't activate like a terraforming and their light stage is just picking off your back row. That makes stuff awkward and I hate that one. <laughs> Which is also why like I'm kind of just on the ropes with like removal like cosmic and stuff like that. I feel like a lot of people have just strayed away from cards like Solemn Strike and what have you. So what do you think would have been general, maybe like Tornado? 
Um, well, like you just have to use a tornado on the light stage, then, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I it's like even even just um, uh, yeah, there's like there's maybe some argument for Time Star Magician. <laughs> I, f- I feel like Time Star is just generally sticking to the board in this spot, but yeah, Time Star because yeah. then like he would not have. Well, he, he doesn't get a search, but he just like those cards get to chill there. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the time star is just sticking. Whereas this big is like not really applying any pressure on the following turn. So, mm-hmm. so time Benjamin guy can take a holy angel and then the pop- mm. purple poison. Oh, he's going yeah, for this. Just didn't matter. <laughs> like the, the trap is just so powerful. Yeah. See, like in the, in these games, Jason, like, well, he didn't obviously prioritize the trap for this one because he drew it pretty cleanly. But um, in, like, other games, you should just, like, prioritize getting to the trap. I see a lot of other people trying to get cute. I see people generally making, like, deals and stuff when they just shouldn't be making it. That's, like, something my friend and I have discussed when we watch, like, some of these DN games. Like, people just won't make Tornado Dragon. They won't pop their double iris and they won't search the trap. And um, I think that's incorrect. The trap is just the best card. Mm-hmm. You, you, like, there's games that you just, like, win because you have the trap. And you have the trap in Tornado Dragon. So now it's like, oh, you get to, like, kill so many fucking cards for free. It's great. And that's the first swear word of the video. <laughs> so he's in a tricky scenario as well because his... Well, he's not really applying any pressure with Bagushka. Oh, wow, and he's top Bagu- mm. Oh, he's got Ash, actually. Fuck Reincarnation can summon back Holly Angel, right? Yeah, so that, that that's like the, the issue yeah. if he puts it to attack. Mm. Let's see, is it any... Creates like, oh, like, oh, yes. like... Not even that, right? Well, like, obviously. Like, <laughs> Jason obviously has the Ash. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but the guy you know, ripped the desires, evened it out. <laughs> this is just going to be like a couple of turns of just like draw pass until like he sets the correct scale. And even then, like the scales aren't doing anything right. He can't play the big goose scale. So yeah. That's the point. I feel like you just turn it to attack and start applying pressure now. But I guess there's like an argument against it. I just feel like the game state is sort of like simplified enough where like once the big goose gets cleared, then you sort of get to do more things. But I, it also depends on what he draws. So kind of weird. I was using Pendulum Graph just now, actually. I was a thing. Uh, I guess. Yeah. And he just adds the spell. Mm. And then he just does it for two turns. Yeah. That all works out. I'm surprised he didn't do it the turn before. Maybe that would have been a lot better. Like the turn before when yeah. he uh, Purple Poisoned and then popped the Field Spell. Because I feel like if you're doing it now, it's just kind of a waste, right? He could have just got away with popping the the iris, searching the field, uh, the spell, and then doing it all again. So. Yeah, it's all working out for him. Now he's just gonna apply some pressure, I guess. Even though, like the scenario isn't like uh, is really 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 strong for him because his opponent oh, two yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah. It's got reincarnation in grave. Oh, it's it's insane. There's like there's like some hands, well, like some combination of cards where like probably reincarnation can just kill Jason, but we'll see. Because right now I'm pretty sure it's just close enough to game, but <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure. Pendulum summon. Uh, time star. Oh, wait, is that game? No, he's already normal summon. All right, no, he's just setting up for next turn. Oh, no, wait. I guess he did that the turn before. Oh, he already minus 17. Oh, oh, right, right. Sorry. He had the so he had the magician. He had the harmonized magician in the scale. So he already swung for 19. All right, this makes sense, yeah. I feel like there might have been like... A, killed that turn but maybe i'm just being dumb i'm not sure 24 18 18 maybe with the fusion or something uh possibly probably not actually i think this is like the most damage he could have got out oh without like just burning the purple poison so in the end phase he's gone pendulum graph target the set and his opponents held the cyclone for the pendulum Mm -hmm. graph that's pretty good my my only issue here is just how how is he not dying? <laughs> how is he not dead? Um, but I like like the purple poison is just gonna do so much here. Like any any block to game shot is just gonna like get killed like through an attack ideally. But... He's probably banished one of his uh, other crowbats. Just yeah. normal summon this attack. Oh, he's uh oh he's going for the big dogs. All right, that works. <laughs> okay. I can get by. Uh, I don't know if I can get behind. Oh, like he can't strike, you, right? Dude, the only card he can have is like maybe scolding. I don't know why scolding would be in his deck. <laughs> so um, I think this is like sort of just like 
The only other thing that could really save him would be Scapegoat in this scenario, right? And I don't think Mm -hmm. there's a way for him to play around. Well, uh, there's a way for Jason to play around Scapegoat. Oh. He can just make make the fusion with piercing, right? Because the guy's on 700. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think you just go for that, and that like just covers all bases. <laughs> but oh, like, he's going for Ignista actually. Oh, oh, Ignista is also like <laughs> really good, um, but that doesn't answer scapegoat for your kill shot. So I'm not sure. It right? shuffles that. Wait, does Ignista can shuffle away a it, token, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can you shuffle away a token, and then purple so poison. So he'll, he'll clear a token. One? Yeah. So he gets to kill two tokens. And he's got yeah, two monsters just, in that. Yeah, game? but yeah, he has he has reincarnation engraved though. Ah, like, yeah, it, that's true. Do you, do you really feel safe? <laughs> I guess, like, his one card in hand might be a blank, but this is, like, this is where you just want to be able to kill them, right? Mm-hmm. I can't see any other card in the Trickstar deck that just you just couldn't have killed them with. Like, so you just, like, couldn't have killed him with the Starving Venom. His opponent scooped here, but he's actually, uh, he's actually not dead this turn. Right? Uh, uh, well, he has the Reincarnation in Grave, right? Yeah. So... Plays two tokens... Yeah, I don't know he just still had it, right? All right, <laughs> interesting. Um, he could have potentially have drawn into something, but yeah, yeah. There's there's always there's always a way you can lose. All right, so that's uh, this is the list again. Anyone interested? Ah, uh, okay. The Swift Two. All right, yeah. Thanks to Bodum for joining. Probably should have <laughs> Any uh, final comments or uh, send offs? Uh, um, shout out to Yu Gi Oh singles DGZ Bots Five. We're coming back January third. Shipping cards. Um, shout out to uh, shout out to Boo. She knows who she is. She'll probably watch this video because she's a creep. Um, and shout out to Nadia for being the sickest. Thanks for your fortune. Comment, like, subscribe, and let us know what deck and who you would like to see next piloting um, a deck of your choice. So thanks everyone. Take care and see you next time.